I'm Jim with Hammerhead Engineering, and today I'll be showing you how to assemble the Hydroslitter tooling string. Right now in the US alone, there's 10 million lead water services providing families with drinking water. The Hydroslitter kit was developed to address this issue. Being part of the R&D team here at Hammerhead, I've had the good fortune to test hundreds of different lead replacement components. The Hydroslitter kit is a culmination of that rigorous testing, providing you the most reliable, durable, and trusted products out there today. Now, let's get into the Hydroslitter kit. Hammerhead offers three different lead replacement kits. The first being a starter kit that will get you through one single pull. The second kit is a half inch kit for half inch lead replacements. And the third kit, which we'll be going over today, replaces five eighths to one inch lead pipe. First thing we wanna to touch on the kit is the cable. The cable is a swage and compacted cable with two different diameter cables. The first diameter is a quarter inch, which is only used to pull the cable through the lead service. You never want to attach the quarter inch cable to whatever you're using to pull. The second half is what you want to pull on. This is a 3 8 diameter cable. It has a better break strength. It's nice and smooth on the outside and pushes easy through the lead. These two cables are brazed in the middle and combined and joined. And this is why we do not want to pull on the quarter inch cable. This is the joint that will let go. Always pull on the 3 8 end. The second component to your kit is this little yellow box. Inside of this box, we have the one inch blade, a three quarter blade, and a five eighths blade. We also have an extra end for your rotter. If your tip were to break off, we do supply this extra chip that you can crimp on yourself and keep finishing your job. We also supply O-rings. These O-rings are used as a replacement on the jaw set that goes inside our expander I'll be showing you shortly. Next item we have is our separation tube. The separation tube provides space between the blade and the bigger expander cone to divide the forces. Those forces are the slitting force and the second force is the expanding force. And the last item we have is this little expander cone. This litter expander cone acts similar to how the separation tube is. It adds a little more distance between that slitting and expanding force, but also does a little pre-expansion work. So when the pipe reaches the bigger expander, it doesn't see as much load, thus you need less pulling force to complete the pull. The next item that's in the kit, our large expander we've been talking about. This opens up and inside is where you'll place your collet. Once the collet's inside, we insert the cable. You want only a quarter inch of the cable hanging out behind the collet before you put this nut on or else it will not fully sit. If it doesn't fully sit, then you run the risk of leaving your new product pipe in the ground and not getting the lead out. With the expander, there's also a tube of anices. This is gonna be your best friend. You wanna always make sure you lube up the collets before you put them in the expander. Otherwise you're gonna need an air chisel to try to break these free and sometimes destroy the expander itself. Let's go over the last few elements of the kit. Here you have the pipe puller to bring in your new product pipe. It can pull in poly and it can pull in copper. You always wanna check the collar on your pipe puller to make sure it corresponds with the correct diameter of the pipe you're using to replace the lead service. Here is our cable puller for 3 8 cable. Like I said earlier, you do not want to use this on a quarter inch cable, only 3 8 diameter. This is what will be attached at the roadside pit typically and pulled on to remove the lead service. The last item we have here is, is what we call the rotter. It has a special engineered tip on the end. It's shorter than your normal rotters. It navigates bends a little easier and is a little more efficient at getting through any abrupt stops within the service itself. To connect the router to the cable, in the kit, we provide these stainless steel zip ties. The zip tie goes through the eyelet on the router and connects to the eyelet on the end of the quarter inch cable. Then the router can be pulled on and the cable can be pushed on to get the cable through the pipe completely. 
Now we're gonna start the assembly process. First thing you wanna do is go to the kit and take out this card. On this card, you'll see the individual components in the kit, where they are in the kit, their part numbers for reordering if necessary. On the flip side, we have this matrix. All you need to do to figure out what you need for any specific job is know your existing pipe diameter and the pipe diameter of the pipe that you'll be replacing the existing lead service with. Once you know those two things, you can go down the right side here, find the corresponding sizes, and then moving left, find the part numbers for the correct components you will need to complete the job. At the bottom here, we have a diagram of what the tooling string should look like once completed. If you forget which component goes where, you can always reference this picture, and it'll show you right where it needs to be. If we do all that correctly, you'll end up with what we have here. Your end product should resemble this tooling string. For this example, I've chosen one of the most common setups I've seen here in Wisconsin, and that is an existing lead line that's three quarter in diameter being replaced with a one inch diameter poly line. First thing we're gonna do before we assemble is take a look at the card, look at the image at the bottom and get an understanding of where each component is gonna end up laying. Then we're gonna take our pipe sizes, go down the left column here and find them, and then work our way to the right and pick out the individual components we'll need to complete this job. I've already done that for us, and everything we need is right here. First thing we're, item we're gonna to wanna to put over the cable is this blade. It has a tapered end and a flat end. A lot of guys wanna put this taper end towards the lead. This is not the slitting surface. In this case, we want the sharp flat end facing towards the lead pipe. So we'll go ahead and slide that over the cable. The next item we'll be sliding on is a smaller expander cone. This cone does a little pre-expansion work like I mentioned earlier. On top of that, it also adds a little distance between the slitting and expanding forces, thus making the overall load required to finish a job less. Next up is the separation tube. Separation tube is like the expander cone, it adds a little more distance between that slitting and expanding force, giving us a lower tonnage overall. And here we have the bigger expander cone. When it comes in the box, this will be already assembled. You wanna go ahead and twist off the nut, push the body over the cable, and set it in place. The next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is take your jaw set Make sure you put anti-seize on each face. All it takes is the drop of a P and just wipe it across the whole face. Once you have anti-seize on the jaw set, you come back here to the cable, and you're gonna slide it right over. When you put this jaw set over the cable, you only want a quarter inch of cable hanging out behind it. Now, to assemble your retention nut, you're gonna slide your expander body back over the collets, being careful not to move them, and twist on the nut itself. A lot of guys in the field like to just hand torque this. I highly do not recommend that. You do wanna to get two wrenches on this and torque it down until you get rid of the gap between the nut and the body. So there's two flats on the sides of the expander cone. Put one wrench over those. The nut itself is a hex. Get the other wrench on there. Keep twisting it until you see those two surfaces connect. and now you're torqued. The next part we're gonna put on is the pipe puller itself to bring in our new product line. What we're gonna do is take out the screw back in this clevis, place the loop on our pipe puller in the clevis, and tighten down that screw, torque it up,
now that's ready to pull. We can also run the tracer wire through these milled relieves on the nut itself, tape it to the puller so you don't lose it, and put your new product pipe inside the puller. As you can see, Hydroslitter is a simple option to replace lead water service lines. If you're looking for more information on training with the Hydroslitter kit, you can go to our website at training.hammerheadtrenchless.com. And if you're looking to purchase the Hydroslitter kit or its components, you can visit our website at hammerheadshop.com.